Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your reading. So when I was meditating on this month's reading for you, um, I saw two images. And um, the first one is, I see this, uh, it's like a summer's uh, night scene. It's really warm outside. It's probably like, uh, you know, after the sun has set, so it's dark. But it's really warm outside, so there are a lot of festivities going on. And I see this woman, she's on the second floor balcony of this really beautiful white marbled house. It looks like it's her house. It, it, so it looks like a mansion and she possesses or owns that house. She's um, on the balcony looking into the distance where there's fireworks. And then um, she looks down below and there's this big grassy area where people put down their um, blankets and they're there to watch the fireworks. So they put the uh, blankets on the ground and they're all sitting there with um, a bunch of people, you know, different groups. Some are there with their family, some are there with their friends, some are there with their um, significant other, just enjoying all facing um, in one direction where the fireworks is, is, is in the distance. And uh, some of them turn around and they see the woman on the balcony and they're like, hey, come down here and join us. We've got um, fruits, we've got grapes, we've got champagne, we've got mimosas, come join us. And she's like, no, I actually have a pretty good view up from up here, which is true, okay? Because she's higher up and there's nothing obstructing her view of the fireworks. So what she's saying technically and logically is true. But I feel like the other people on the ground are just like kind of feeling a little bit rejected that she didn't want to join them because they're extending an offer and it seems almost like she's refusing. So you can see the, the juxtaposition, the people on the ground versus this woman in her nice little marbled mansion, right? So from their perspective, they're kind of thinking, does she think like she's too good for us? Okay. But from her perspective, it's like, I actually have a really good view up here. Nothing is obstructing me. I can see everything. I have a panoramic view. And so I think I might stay here. And so I feel like this situation is coming in to kind of um, show you or to, to kind of show you in a more of an emotional sense how a lot of the times you think things are this way but then other people have a different perspective as to how they perceive events or in in particular how they perceive your perception of them does that make sense so I feel like this is where we have to be really really careful and um, kind of um, err on the side of over explaining we can't really assume that everybody, you know, understands us. So we have to over explain. Okay. Um, and so we are heading into the Mercury retrograde period and Mercury retrograde periods are just like ripe for misunderstandings in every capacity. Okay. They're, they're, it's just ripe for like, um, imagine slights for people to feel a little bit extra sensitive and for people to feel a little bit jilted or slighted when you didn't mean it and so you have to be really really careful uh, if somebody is extending an offer or reaching out or communicating with you that you over explain and you tell them what you're really thinking and why you're really thinking those things just so they don't think that they did anything wrong or they don't think that you're uh, purposely pushing them away so I feel like that's um, that's what came in with that first message okay so it's like yes she does have a view but then once again she's isolated on her little balcony whereas the people down below there's a community of people and everyone is there not so much for the fireworks fireworks is it's nice but I feel like they're there more for the social event, for that sense of camaraderie, for that sense of inclusiveness. And they want to include this person into their fold. They want to bring her into the fold. They want to initiate her or they want her to join them because they enjoy her company and they don't want her to feel left out. But she doesn't feel left out because you guys are so independent that you don't need other people. You know, most of the time you don't need other people and especially 
you're better off, you know, working on your own, doing things on your own, and you don't have this sense of needing another person in order to know how you feel at all times, okay? Um, and as a result of it, you're kind of, um, and it, it's, it's funny because you can be very social, you're very caring, and you can be very, very social, but a lot of social interaction for long periods of time can really wear you out, okay? It, it, it can, you need to kind of retreat and um, you need to retreat to pretty much, you know, recharge your batteries, okay? So I always think of Aquarius as uh, the people that make really, really good, like, you know, first and second impression. And then by the third um, encounter, you might feel bored of the other person or you might feel like oh we we've already exhausted all topics now we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper and talk about um, more emotional things and it makes you uncomfortable and so you might shy away from you know um, these gatherings because it, it takes a lot more out of you so that's what i'm feeling just be careful that you can you need to explain yourself and just be like you know, I, I get really burnt out um, if I have to socialize too much, so I'm going to opt out. That way I can bring my best to the social interaction, okay? And that way people don't misunderstand. That way people don't think like, oh, is the Aquarius person thinking like they're too good for us? They don't want to hang out with us. So be very, very careful about that. Um, there was another thing that I saw. Let me try to backtrack and remember. There was another, um, there was another image. It just came and went. Okay, maybe it will come back to me. Well, you've got two kings. This is a good sign. Possibly three. Oops. Okay, a lot more cards than I want to. I'm going to put them all back and then I just need another card, please. And see if that King of Pentacles came back up. King of Pentacles going to come back up. Oh, okay. So you do have that King of Pentacles coming back up. All right. So you've probably got like, um, you have three kings for sure, but you also have the emperor. Um, okay. So quite an interesting spread. And um, I'm going to try my best to remember that second image, um, you know, as I go through the reading, but let's just go through the reading. So what i feel is um oh okay so I, I do remember it i see this um high school girl and um they're they're lockers you know those uh lockers where high school students or middle school students can put their books in and then there's a combination lock and that's just where they store their books so they don't have to carry around their books all day okay so that's the environment that i'm seeing and there's this girl she's um she she just finished like gym or something and so she's putting her shoes on and she got her shoes or her, her shoes out of her locker and she's in the process of putting it on and her friends are just like, um, oh, we're going to go get some ice cream. And then she's, uh, she, so they're, t they're, she's over here, they're talking over here and they're like, we're going to go get some ice cream. And then she's kind of thinking to herself like, oh, I just ran like, you know, a few laps. Ice cream would be so nice. So she's thinking that. And then as she's thinking that this group over here, they're like, hey, do you want to get some ice cream with us? And then she's just like kind of uh, thrown off like, oh, but I have to, you know, get ready. I have to uh, I have to finish putting on my clothes. I don't want them to wait. I don't want them to, you know, um, have to wait on me it's just such an inconvenience so she's mulling it over and she's like no you guys go ahead without me and then one of the person from the group was just like we can wait for you it's not a problem at all and she goes oh in that case wait for me wait for me and then the, i hear this echo like wait for me wait for me wait for me and so i feel like this month is a lot about self-expression 
okay? And jiving with the first image where you don't want to be misunderstood, where you, you have like a really systematic way of going through life. And what I mean by that is, yes, you have a perfectly unobstructed view on that balcony. You see all and you enjoy it and you don't mind being up there by yourself. But I also feel like there's a need for you to connect with others, with, with like, you know, everyday human beings, okay? Um, Aquarius tends to be a little bit more of a scientist, somebody who observes things from afar, that armchair approach, where you're looking at other people uh, go through life, you observe people, you watch, you people watch, and um, there's safety in it, right? Because it's a very detached, objective, scientific view of the world and of human interactions. But it's not really human interaction because you're so removed from it. And so this is a month where you kind of need to, you know, it, it's, it's almost like I see you even wobbling into like, and I, I mentioned this with the Gemini, it's like they're testing the water in a situation before they head in. But Geminis are very carefree, okay? They're, they're less analytical than you are. And I feel like you are very, very analytical and you're so used to working by yourself, okay? Everyone here, they have their own function. This person is doing that from the ground. The other person's doing that in the background. And even though they might be in the same environment, everyone has their designated responsibilities and their roles. And there is no um, concept of crowdsourcing, uh, let's exchange ideas, let's work together. There's none of that because Aquarius don't do that. Okay, you're, you're capable of doing it. If you are in school and you're forced to do group work, you don't mind. But deep down, you like to have things your way and you like to do things your way and you're, you feel like you're better off doing it on your own. And you would prefer it, for example, if you had to do a group project. Everyone gets a part, they do their part, and then all the parts make up the whole. Like you would prefer that, rather than having to sit there and gather ideas, and then talk about, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And all of that talking is really interfering with the productive process, right? It slows things down. It makes things like a bargaining um, session rather than a productive session. And so you're very, very end result oriented. And I feel like for many of you, it's just much easier for everybody to split up the task. Everyone takes one task, works individually, and then once they're done, they all come together. And then all the things blend together like that's how you feel the world should function okay that way everyone is responsible for their own um uh, whatever it is that they produce they're responsible for it okay and because of this highly independent you're so independent i feel like in the realm of human interaction you're kind of like this a little bit wobbly okay he's like wobbling it's almost like that um, that drunk guy coming home from the bar he's like toppling over crossing the street and, and you know stumbling um, I don't see drinking or anything like that but what I do see is um, I see a situation where you feel a little bit socially awkward you feel like you're kind of out of your element and um, you have a lot that you want to, that, that's racing through your mind, okay? His um, crown is lit up. You have a lot of things that you want to, to express. You have a lot of ideas. You, you have a lot of um, things that you want to say, but you're also very measured, okay? He's kind of like pouring the two cups, trying to find the right balance, trying to um, ex convey a, a specific emotion but not wanting to scare the other person off. Wanting to suggest something, but not wanting to inconvenience the other person and make them feel like they're pigeonholed into doing that one activity. So I feel like you're, you're kind of like battling yourself, battling between what you really feel emotionally very excited about 
and trying to appease everybody else. And that constant like weighing out, it's not something that Aquarius like to do. Aquarius like to execute plans and ideas and act. And the, the whole process about getting everybody on board, making sure that, are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? That whole process seems like a farce, okay? It seems like it's something Libras are very good at. But for you, it seems like, oh my gosh, time consuming, time that could be better spent doing something else. So I feel like you're you're in you're you're walking into this possibly a social environment and um it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable it feels like a farce and i i, I just feel like you're kind of restraining yourself okay you're restraining yourself uh, for calling it what it is that's what it feels like to me um not that you don't like people it's just the the whole dance that people have to do around each other trying not to, it, it's 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 almost like trying to be so politically correct where we just stop communicating or we have to be so mindful and so watchful of how we communicate um not to upset anybody not to offend anybody and like walking around on eggshells all the time and it, it wastes a lot of time it wastes a lot of energy and you feel like at the end of the day it's all done in a very restrained weird and and in a way that is not very authentic and because of that you're just not really sure where you fit in the picture and you're not really sure if you should go along with it because it's not authentically you. Okay, so that's what I'm feeling. There is a definitely a social environment that might be a little bit awkward for, for many of you. And it's not awkward in a way where you have body image issues. You don't have that. You, you just feel like the environment's a little bit like... It's a little bit too much having to take into consideration everybody's feelings let's talk about our feelings let's th talk about our thoughts let's talk about um let's share information that's not really relevant to getting the task done that's what it feels like so moving into the end of the month this is what's in store for you so the three of pentacles is a lot about seeing the value in group work and the value in collaboration okay um in the past, honestly, you took this type of a mentality where it's like, I'm better off by myself. People don't know what they're doing. Okay. And I feel like this came about mainly because there were trust issues. Okay. Um, is everybody going to be holding up their end of the bargain? Is everybody going to um, do their task, do what they're supposed to do? If one person steps up and assumes the role of a leader, does that allow the other person to kind of step down and be alleviated of their responsibility? So you don't you were probably dealing with people who might have been opportunistic where you worked really, really hard and long and hard at a situation. And then you start to see that other people benefit from it and they didn't even have to lift a finger. So you might have been dealing with people who were quite opportunistic. And so your survival mechanism was, I'm gonna do it myself. You do your part, I do mine, okay? However, in this new work environment, in the month of March, and this is a three here, in the month of March, you're thrust into a new environment where everybody does their part. Everyone is responsible. Everyone is accountable for their actions. So this is a true collaborative environment where everybody brings their best into a situation and everyone has a specific set of skills and all together, all of their energies blend, all of their knowledge and expertise blend so that they can fill in those pentacles that are kind of um, missing, okay? unfinished or missing knowledge gaps i feel are being filled in for many of you who have been working really 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 long and hard you're making some major major strides in your career and some major breakthroughs here that will really allow you to kind of like master and learn and and just be really skilled at the work that you do 
I have a tremendous amount of uh, pentacle suit um, cards in the pentacle suit that came out. So we have the eight of pentacles working very diligently. Many of you will be um, putting in a lot of overtime, staying late, making sure your work is done, but you're doing that while you're happy, okay? Mainly because you're learning things, you're learning from other people, you're picking people's brains, and I feel like you really enjoy the process. We also have as well the Six of Pentacles, financial windfall and financial abundance. Three of Pentacles, collaboration with other people. This is a really beautiful card, and this is what Aquarius love. It's like pooling the best resources and all the knowledge and all the expertise from the best, the most intelligent people and building something with all that knowledge, okay? This is what you, this is kind of like the epitome of the Aquarius energy where we put our heads together and solve problems. And King of Pentacles, this is the card that came back out. So I'm really glad it came back out. Um, this denotes financial, you know, success, having made it, building up your empire and feeling very, very uh, pleased with all of your concrete, worldly, practical accomplishments and responsibilities. Okay. So you're going to be sitting very, very nicely, um, this month. And I'm laughing because you have three Kings. And possibly, well, you also have the emperor. He's sitting, he's sitting, he's sitting, he's sitting. So for whatever reason, there's a need for movement, okay? And this this man is sitting as well. So there's a need for movement. Many of you might be in a very sedentary type of a job and it's making you, it, it could potentially make you feel a little bit antsy, okay? You have a lot of nervous energy and uh, a lot of you are um, very quick on your feet, on your toes. And so I feel like you, you need that stimulation as well. Not only the mental stimulation, but the physical stimulation. So needing to get out and about, needing to do some physical activities, needing to, you know, join the world of people rather than be isolated like this. Okay, like these, these four figures. So the energy is a lot more about stepping out, stepping out, walking, um, enjoying the, sun, sun, the sunlight, collaborating with people, but physically stepping out. And I feel like there, with the Wheel of Fortune, it's almost like fortune is on your side. So the weather might be a lot nicer. There might be a lot more activities, a lot of social gatherings, a lot of opportunities, opportunities, a lot of opportunities for you in the social front to get yourself out there, to mingle, to socialize, to really enjoy, you know, the company of other people and uh, invitations and, and things like that, okay? So the month looks really good. So let me talk about these three people. Fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. Um, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is the King of Cups and the King of Pentacles, okay? So you've got three kings here, the energy of three people. So on the one hand, I feel like if these were love interests or people that you're dealing with, Let me talk about them individually. Um, so, you know, money looks really good. I, I don't want to dwell on that anymore because it's just very phenomenally uh, abundant. Um, let's talk about this fire sign. Um, I see Sagittarius energy mainly because we have here the temperance card. This is somebody that you're testing the waters with. Okay. This is somebody that's really stirring your passion in some way. So it's almost like they're beckoning you to come out and play. They're beckoning you to come forward th uh, towards them. And I feel almost like I, I see this giddiness about you where if you're dealing with this person, sun, moon, or rising, um, they make you feel like a little kid again. There's this really happy, but also nervous, trepidatious, but also excited energy. So I'm seeing like this, this, push and pull like uh, nervousness but excitement and I feel almost like you're you're I, I see you really interested in this person I see you as well very nervous about this person and I see you 
worrying about how this person perceives you. And Aquarius don't normally care how somebody feels about them or think about them unless they like that person a lot. So I feel like you're constantly wondering, I wonder how this person feels about me, okay? Um, I feel like this is a person that has a lot of suitors. They're quite popular. They're very accomplished. Um, they might have been married or are married or have children or, you know, um, in some capacity. But I feel like they're single right now. They might have been married or might have been um, in a separation or something, but like they're ready to date again. You could meet this person in a social environment or like an online dating capacity, okay? The Seven of Cups is usually online dating, looking at other people's portfolio, uh, not portfolio, I'm sorry, profiles. So usually online dating, online um, communication or communication from a distance even. Uh, text messages, emails, things like that, okay? Electronic communication. So I feel like you, you and this person might be going back and forth. And then I'm also feeling this person is in a transformative phase in their life and they're, they have a lot of options, okay? But I do feel though, Aquarius, you do stand out. You do stand out with this person. And I, I also feel like this is someone who is very protective of you. They see you as something, it's like the apple of, of their eyes. They want to protect you. They see the best in you. Um, I'm getting this as well, that they feel as if you might be emotionally confused. And there's a good reason why they think that. And I, I feel a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, fire signs are very expressive. And you can, you can look at their face and pretty much know how they feel about you. If they like you, you will see their eyes sparkle. You will see their face flush. They will smile when they're with you or when they see you. You will see how excited they are in their facial expressions, their features. And just, you know, the, they're, they're very straightforward. They will ask you out. They will text you. They will, you know, be very expressive. And I feel like that's that's what makes you really scared because they they might be coming on a little bit too strongly. Um, and I feel like it makes you a little bit, it, it could make you a little bit embarrassed or it could make you, it could throw you back, like it could throw you off mainly because it's really hard for you to show your emotions. So this person feels like you're emotionally confused. You don't know what you want. And so they could get a little bit frustrated if they have to deal with you. If this is somebody that you like, um, they need a little bit of ego stroking, not that they're used to it, but they need that, that validation from you in order to come towards you. Does that make sense? Okay. And then on the other hand, I have this water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And keep in mind, the cards are not gender specific. It's just I do have, you know, uh, based on my Google, my YouTube analytics, I do have like 80% of women watching this, okay? All of my videos, not just this. So we have here a water sign, and this is someone who's very romantic, who's very emotionally expressive. You will know how they feel about you by the way in which they express themselves verbally, okay? And that also makes you feel very, very nervous because you're, it, it's hard for you to express yourself emotionally. <laughs> so <clears throat> with this person, they look at you almost like their ship is coming in. Okay, see that ship on the corner? It's like he's bracing for impact. He's all like, finally. Finally, it's coming in, so they, they see you as someone who's quite special, who stands out, okay? But with the Seven of Cups, they might see you as somebody who has a lot of options. They might see you as someone who has a lot of options. And because you have a lot of options, they don't know if they can trust you 100% with their heart because they feel like 
they, they feel like you behave like this with everybody or, or you spend a lot of time with a lot of people. And so they, they want to be that exclusive person. And so it's really hard for them to, to trust you 100%. And it's hard for them to trust in the relationship. Okay. Um, and then I also have as well, King of Pentacles. Okay. This is a man of authority here. This is the man that, that is self-made. And I literally feel somebody who has worked from the ground up. It's like he started out with nothing, built his own empire and is now, you know, really, really stable. Um, this is somebody who is a little bit guarded when it comes to dating. He doesn't, he or she does not want to be used. Okay. So, um, uh, Taurus Virgo Capricorn. It's somebody who who loves people that are very intellectual. And it's weird, but um, the, the way this person is, they want somebody that wants to contribute to society in some capacity. They want somebody that's not wrapped up in themselves and, and all about, you know, uh, how beautiful I look, how handsome I look, um, how much money I look. I feel like they care a lot more because like I said this is someone who's self-made they started out with nothing so they really really know how to appreciate a good person they appreciate honesty dedication hard work perseverance and I feel like they see that in you and this is weird because a lot of people think Aquarius are very flighty but this person sees um, merits in you they see you as a hard worker they see you as somebody who doesn't mind getting their hands dirty they see you as some like they, they see all of these hidden traits or traits that you try to uh, that not a lot of people know about you. So they see the value in you and they definitely see there's great communication between the two of you. When you talk, the topics tend to be a little bit more uh, humanitarian. It tends to be a little bit more philosophical. It's more about problem solving. It's more about um, sharing ideas, sharing ideals, sharing aspirations, sharing career goals. What do we want to do 10 years from now? What do we want to be doing? How are we going to, you know, contribute to some type of a growth? So I feel like the communication tends to be a little bit more philosophical. And this person really likes you. They like the fact that you're selfless and they enjoy the fact that you give and give a lot of yourself to other people and you don't hold back. Like you don't keep scores. You don't keep like tabs. You don't, um, you're not petty. So they, they really like those ideals about you. And when someone has, um, you know, I feel like this is a, uh, somebody who has had a rough life. Okay. Um, like things were not handed to them on a silver platter. They had to go out into the world and, fought for it and, and worked for it. And so they value hard work very much. And this is somebody who's going to call you. I'm seeing this little bell here. You know, it's like the, in, in the hotel lobby, when the attendant is not there and you want to get their attention, you ring that bell. So I feel like they're going to make themselves known. So there's a lot of uh, communication that's going to be coming through between you and this person. And I also feel as well, they're waiting for your attention they're waiting for this thing to come over and just hit that bell so they they could be very much waiting for you to reciprocate or to communicate in some way this emperor energy i feel is your energy aquarius so the um you could be dealing with that fire sign sagittarius or aries or leo but i feel like this is your energy the 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 this is somebody that is um, not comfortable with the realm of emotions. The emperor does what needs to be done. He or she usually makes the difficult decisions to, you know, for the greater good. Okay. They don't make decisions from the heart. They make des decisions from the mind. And as a result of it, I feel like it's really hard for you guys to express yourself. It's really hard for you guys to express your needs, your wants, and even what you feel, um, what you feel you deserve. So what I'm sensing here is, uh, you're wedged possibly between two people. You're wedged between two people here. 
King of Cups and the King of Pentacles. One person stirs you emotionally. Okay, that's the way it, it seems to me. One person really stirs you emotionally and you feel really safe with this one person. The other person stirs you and inspires you professionally and the other person really it's like one person makes you feel safe the other person you really admire and you don't really know which way to choose and i feel you going towards the person that you admire the the weight is like unevenly distributed and it's airing towards the pentacles so i feel like you might be going towards that earth sign taurus virgo capricorn okay or even that fire sign um sagittarius aries or leo because this emotional situation it's safe it's safe but it's also um it's like when you feel safe aquarius you can also feel bored so something here you feel it's already too much and so you might want to try something new but in general i feel like you're looking for people that you can build with you're looking for people that you can that really inspires you okay and i feel like you've met, you're meeting people that really inspires you and you're you're more apt to go within that direction um <clears throat> going back to that second image that i saw with the girl in the locker and her friends like wanting to go get ice cream um you know how she was thinking like oh ice cream would be nice and then the other person extends the invitation i feel like this is a month where you have to it, it's almost like you're a close book you're a close book okay like this emperor you you see his backside but he's also on a um throne of it's made from rock marble or whatever and so it's 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 really really hard to it's really hard for people to know what excites you it's hard for people to gauge your interest it's hard for people to know like is this all there is or do they have a life outside of work you know um, do they have hobbies? Do they have interests? Do they watch movies? Do they watch Netflix? Do they, you know, read the news? What do they do outside of work? So I feel like a lot of people are wondering about you. So you might have this air of mystery about you. And in a perverse way, you might want to maintain that air of mystery. But I feel like it's really important for you to open up. And, you know, if you're thinking like, oh, ice cream, like an ice cream social would be nice, then maybe you should, you know, verbalize that. Or maybe you should organize that. That way you're doing things that you enjoy with other people. So I, I, I feel like this month has a lot more to do with just expressing yourself. Err on the side of over explaining rather than under explaining. Making sure that people understand what you mean. Making sure that people don't misinterpret or misread you. And try to really open up verbally. Okay? It doesn't have to be emotional. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable. But it should start in the way that you know best, which is communicating in a verbal, verbal way and expressing more of yourself, expressing more of your needs, expressing your interests and your likes so that there is this banter back and forth between you and other people and it allows things to naturally grow and deepen. Um, the interesting thing is in this, in this spread, there isn't a single um, sword card and sword, the sword energy is what you're comfortable with and its absence denotes to me that this is a month where we have to go through and feel things out okay we have to rely on our intuition not so much our mind we have to do things more based on our emotional responses to other people or to a situation so you know just just imagine walking into an environment uh, with your eyes closed and then gauging and feeling people's energies if someone has really positive energy, you're gonna feel yourself pull towards them. So it's like, don't think with your mind, think with more of your intuition. And I know that's easier said than done, but what I mean is, I feel like if it feels right, go with it. If that's something that you want, go with it. And you don't have to question, you don't have to doubt, you don't have to think about, you know, like, uh, what's the outcome of this? How is this gonna work? Don't think, how is this going to work? If it feels right emotionally, go with it. Go with your gut, okay? Why is there an absence of swords here? 
<laughs> we have here the Four of uh, Swords. This is a card about wishing and praying and hoping for a situation to get better, okay? And I feel like for many of you, there's a sense of isolation. He's been in his slumber for so long. Socializing was not happening. And this might have been a situation for the past four months, four years. He's been here for a while. Those moths are ga gathering, okay? Um, so what I feel is you're bursting away from this state of um, rest and restoration. You've done the necessary, you know, um, you, you, you spent a lot of time on your own. And now it's time for you to join the, the community of people. All the cards look really, really positive. There isn't a single card here that denotes to me problems. So whatever you think is like the worst case scenario, you have to kind of like, once again, you know, don't overanalyze, don't overthink, don't think about worst case scenarios. You need to just go with it and into it. How does it make me feel? Okay. If it makes me feel happy, if it makes me feel good, if I feel positive about it, how could it possibly be bad? And so going from that space, you will start to see that you're manifesting and beginning to pull things and people and energies towards you that are a lot more in alignment with you that are really good for you. So the Four of Swords, the absence of the sword energy in this entire spread indicates to me to get out from the slumber okay no more excuses I, I feel like you guys really need to get out and and you know um really enjoy the weather get yourself out of this sitting position and you know just um enjoy life a little bit more okay money is not going to be a problem everything seems really good and we also have as well this magnificent Wheel of Fortune with the Temperance card, which basically means the situation turning in your favor. It's still a slow process, but I feel like it's turning. And so you need to be the one to turn the wheels of fate in your favor. Okay. I hope the reading is helpful, Aquarius. I'm really happy to see this for you. Um, so just a quick announcement. Um, for those who are still emailing me regarding private readings, I don't do them anymore. I do have a, a person that I highly recommend. She is a psychic out of California. I've included a link to her description box, uh, to her scheduling website in the description box below. So if you want to book a reading for yourself, um, please click, click on that link. If you know somebody who's going through a rough time as, as well, you know, who needs spiritual guidance, I highly recommend her. I've used her services for the past two years and I just, uh, she's phenomenal, okay? So give that a try if you'd like and uh, I'll see you in about two weeks, Aquarius, take care.